Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Colony Park Aquatic Facility virtual meeting. Hola a todos y bienvenidos. My name is Laura Cortez, and I will be your moderator for tonight's meeting. On behalf of the Austin Parks and Recreation Department, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to join us tonight. Um, before we begin our presentation, we would like to ask our Spanish translator to join us so she can provide the login information for anyone who is speaking Spanish and would like to join this presentation. So we're gonna go ahead and bring on Larissa Davila from BCO Consulting. Dr. Cortez, I will be Larissa for today. Uh, <laughs> did not make it with us, not yet, but I will do my best. Uh, hola a todos, muchas gracias por estar aquí. Muchas gracias por apoyarnos. Como dijo Dr. Laura Cortez, por favor, conéctese. Y aquí están los servicios de interpretación en español que le podamos ayudar. El número de teléfono para hablar es 512-387-8400. Y yeah, el ID de conferencia es 568-957-645 uh, y el gatito, hashtag. Otra vez, por favor, si gusta conectarse con nosotros, les uh, pedimos que por favor se conecten a esta línea y alguien va a estar ahí esperándolos para seguir con esta junta. Gracias. Thank you, Liliana. You did awesome. <laughs> so we're going to allow everybody to kind of move over there. Si alguien habla español, tenemos un separate uh, uh, número para que puedas hablar con ellos. So we hope everybody enjoyed the virtual open house. Um, we're going to have a fun activity at the end of our presentation. So we want everyone to stay with us until the end. Um, if you have children at home, this is a perfect way to get them engaged in the process. We want everyone to have a voice in designing the pool. Also, before we begin the presentation, we'd like to acknowledge any political officials joining us online, anyone who's been a special part in making or giving feedback for the Colony Park District Park. And also we wanna give a special shout out to our colleagues at Fork Lift Dance Works. They held a three year residency with the Austin Parks and Recreation Depar Department. And they brought much awareness about the need for Austin Park pool improvement and they've been so gracious in contributing the photos we have used today for social media and for our presentation. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and get started and share what you can expect for tonight. Um, just to give you a little overview of the agenda, we are going to introduce the project team and everybody who's behind making this happen. Um, we're gonna be sharing a little bit about the history of the Colony Park pool, as well as the Colony Park District Park. We also want to share pool classifications. So for those of you that were part of the aquatic master plan, there are different pool classifications. We want to give you some insights into that. And just like we had for the Colony Park District Park, we are going to have an art installation, which is really exciting for this project. So we are going to have someone that's going to talk about the art in public places process. And then most important, probably most of you are thinking, what's the timeline for this project? When's this all gonna happen? When's the pool gonna get done? So we're gonna go over a project timeline. And then as I mentioned in the end, we are going to have you have an opportunity to participate in what we're calling community conversations online. Um, but we're gonna have you be able to give your feedback and witness online what is taking place. So at this time, I'd like to introduce the individual that's gonna be working on this project and bring to the screen my colleague, Scott Sin. He is the project contact for the Colony Park Pool. Hi there, Scott. Hi, Dr. Cortez. How are you today, tonight? I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, yes, welcome everybody. Um, I hope you enjoy this presentation tonight. We've put a lot of work into it. I'm looking forward to your input. That's the biggest thing we want to get out of tonight is what do you think? What do you want? What are you looking for? We need to hear it all. And now if you don't get it in tonight, we'll let you know there are be plenty more opportunities along the way. This isn't a one shop stop as far as uh, this goes for this project. So really looking forward to hearing from you and can't wait. Awesome. So with that, we're going to go ahead and introduce the project team first. Do you want me to keep going? Okay, thank you. Um, so again, my name is Scott Sin. I'm a landscape architect uh, with the Parks and Rec Department and I'll be your primary point of contact for this project. Um, now there'll be many city folks that'll be involved in this project throughout this whole process. And so some of the key ones that I do wanna just bring up real quick is 
Pedro Potlon with the uh, Aquatics Division and, and Marjorie Flanagan with the Art and Public Places. Uh, you'll be hearing from Marjorie on the Art and Public Places and, and Pedro is here to answer all your questions for the aquatics uh, portion of the, of the project. Um, and you will hear, like I said, sorry, you'll hear from Marjorie a little bit later. So um, I wanted to introduce next slide, uh, Laura, the project team. So um, just want to go. The first step in this process was just so everybody knows to give you kind of a layout of, of how this works is we our first process, our first step in the process to hire a management, a design and a construction firm to build this pool, to design and build this pool. So we went through the standard city of Austin pro selection process for each of these three consultants. Uh, the process included a selection panel of city professionals, which is our standard and how we do it. And we also included community members in this case as well for this project uh, and choosing the most qualified per firms. I'm pleased to say that Ms. Barbara Scott represented Colony Park neighborhood as part of the panel. We cannot thank her enough for her efforts and she can tell you it was a lot of effort and she is so right because it was a lot of effort, but I will say it was probably the most fun panel I have ever been a part of and I look forward to doing it again. And so with that, I want to turn it over to our design lead, uh, Greg Houston with Marmon Mock Architecture to uh, introduce the team and talk about their qualifications for everybody. Thank you, Scott, and good evening, everyone. Uh, we're thrilled to be here. We're looking very forward to getting your input uh, in this process tonight because what you impart to us tonight will help us immensely as we look at the design and ultimately the construction of the pool. And so we're, we're listening tonight. Uh, we, we're listening, and if you have any questions, we'll be glad to answer those. My name is Greg Houston, and I'm the design principal with Marmon Mock Architecture. And uh, also with me in the room is Sean Bacon. Uh, Sean will be our project manager for the project with Marmon Mock. And Sean and I have been in recreational aquatics design for over 25 years. And we've designed facilities across the state of Texas um, but also as part of our team is uh, the, the nationally renowned firm of Councilman Hunsaker and Darren Babard is part of our team. And Darren and Sean and I have worked together for 25 years. So we go back a ways and Darren's resume includes uh, recreational aquatics facilities all over the country. They've done over a thousand projects. They're familiar with all of uh, the latest technologies and design features and all of the codes that go into pools across the country and, and specifically in, in your community in Austin. So we're thrilled to be together again. We're, we're happy to be here. Um, also as part of our team is a project management firm and they're represented by David Niegebauer and Ashtul Mehta. And David and I go back over 20 years and they're excellent managers who will help us um, manage the schedule of the project and the overall budget for the project. And as you know, every one of these projects has a budget and we'll be working uh, strategically to, to meet that. Um, and then our third partner in the design management construction process is Flintco Construction and they'll be led by Gary Miller. And Gary uh, has done many projects for the city of Austin. He's familiar with many of the communities. Um, they will be partnering with local subcontracting firms to give the best benefit to each of the communities that they work in and particularly in Colony Park. So we're happy to be working with Gary. And uh, you've met Dr. Laura Cortez already. And so um, she will be orchestrating the rest of the communications tonight. And as we meet again in follow up meetings with you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. So now that you guys have got to hear from everyone who's going to be working behind the scenes, they are going to be available later tonight to answer any questions you might have. Um, so now I want to introduce someone special from a com the community. She's been working tirelessly on this project for 10 years. She's been at numerous meetings. She's been sharing information with you on next door. She's been advocating on your behalf at City Hall to ensure that Colony Park is definitely receiving the same amount of benefits as the rest of the city. So we're going to go to go ahead at this time and introduce Miss Barbara Scott. She is the president of the Colony Park Lakeside Neighborhood Association, and she's going to be joining us to share a little bit more about the history of this project. So Miss Scott. Hello. Uh, welcome this evening. Uh, as uh, Dr. Cortez said, I am Barbara Scott. I'm the president of the Colony Park Lakeside Neighborhood Association. 
And for those of you who are interested, we have a monthly meeting every third Monday at 6.30. Uh, we are now doing it on Zoom. Next month's meeting will be on the fourth Monday because of the holiday. If you send me your information and you can reach me at Barbara underscore Scott at sbcglobal.net, I will be glad to add you to our list. Uh, this is a really important project for the community. Uh, for over 40 years, we have been working, uh, trying to get a swimming pool in this area for our children. And so it is finally happening. Uh, it's going to be a couple of years, but we will have it. It sits on uh, the 93 acre Colony Park District Park, uh, which is right off of Colony Loop, 7201, uh, I believe, Colony Loop. And uh, we were able to uh, work with the former uh, director of PARD, which was Sarah Hensley, to get on the bond uh, for uh, 2018, I believe, or 20, yeah, 2018. And so in doing so, uh, for those of you who do not know, the only way you can have a pool built is to do it with bond money. You can't get donations or what have you. It has to be bond money. And so that's what we did. And so we are, we're just ecstatic that we are having this process and we want everybody to be involved and especially our children. Uh, for those who don't have children with you, we are planning on reaching out to the different schools in the area and letting the children be involved as well in picking uh, the different toys and rides and what have you that they want for their swimming pool, because this is why we do what we do. But we thank you for being here and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you, Ms. Scott. And thank you for the work and the dedication you've been doing along with everybody in the Colony Park core team. So I think at this point, Scott, Miss, uh, we're going to leave it up to you and turn the presentation. Miss Scott and I are going to jump off and turn it over. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, Miss Scott. I, 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 there's not enough thanks that can go around for that lady and the work she's done. And it's been a, it was a true pleasure having her on the selection panel to uh, get this project started. So one of the things that we wanted to start out with on this uh, process, so everybody has kind of a basic understanding of where we are. So in 2018, we passed the uh, uh, council approved, I think it was February, I think it was February 1st, 2018, uh, council passed the 2018 Aquatics Master Plan. As part of that, and I know every, there's probably a lot of people on here who were at meetings uh, in 2016, 2017, I believe, um, that participated in that. So wanted to give kind of the, what I call the baseline or, or what uh, um, will be kind of a standard that we'll be moving forward with from here. So the community pool is uh, basically classification for the Colony Park pool. Uh, that classification is basically informed from a, um, sorry, I was going to revert from the master plan itself. I just lost it. There it is. Uh, is basically um, from a larger market area, roughly a 10 minute drive is, is the area that it serves. So the facilities, these facilities may charge a fee. Uh, it doesn't say they will, but they may. Uh, they will be designed to better host programs and swim teams in addition to facilities that you see at like a neighborhood park pool or something of that nature. These pools may provide some of the following amenities that you see here on the screen. So they can provide lap lanes, water slide, tot slide, interactive water play features, splash pads, climbing wells, diving boards, group pavilions, office space, rooms for meetings and parties. Um, these are all possibilities that can happen in the community pool. They are decided tonight. Well, not completely tonight, but obviously over the next few uh, community meetings that we'll have. But that's these are kind of the ideas that we want to hear from you is, is one aspect of what we're looking for is what do you want to have in your pool? Those are some of the ideas. The pool, the, the traditional size of the pool is, is about five to 7,000 square feet. Again, it's got the six to eight lap lanes, the play area, the aquatics office training room. Uh, one of the similar ones that we uh, kind of can compare this to to give you maybe an idea of scale and what you're looking for would be Bartholomew Pool. Um, and these are some of the pictures from Bartholomew Pool. There's an, an aerial of showing some of the shade structures that are used there on the right, slide B. Slide A is the actual slide there at Bartholomew Pool. Um, some of the lap lanes, the diving board, minus unfortunately the diving board because of COVID. Um, so there will be a diving board um, when this COVID thing goes away. And so those are some of the ideas that we want to hear from you. And again, it's all based on what the neighborhood input is, uh, what the budgets are, of course. Um, I don't think I can have everything that you want in here, but the idea is to try to accommodate as many things as we can with the money that we have. 
And that is our plan moving forward. So that's kind of the basis for you to think about as we move forward tonight and really throughout this whole process um, of kind of what, what would you like to see in your pool? Um, if you want to put a Ferris wheel in, let us know. But I don't know if we'll do that. So anyway, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Marjorie Flanagan to give a presentation about Art Public Places. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm Marjorie Flanagan. I'm with Art in Public Places, and I'm excited to talk to you about our process. Some of you might recognize me. I worked on the Colony Park District Park, and I'll show you a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, if we were here together in person, like we usually do, I'd be looking at you and asking you to raise your hands if you've heard about art in public places. Uh, the city of Austin was the first municipality in the state of Texas to establish a percent for art program uh, by ordinance. Um, in 1985, voters, voters initiated a requirement of eligible capital improvement projects set aside 1%, and in 2002, they raised that to 2% for public artwork. So what is public art? Public art is an artist's response to our time and place and the community sense of who we are. Why public art? Public art is a part of our collective memory and evolving culture. It reflects and reveals society and adds meaning to our surroundings. As artists respond to our times, they reflect their inner voice to the outside world. They create and chronicle our public experience. Public art is for, with, and by the public, which includes you. So how does AIPP work? Generally, the AIPP process is split into three phases, artist selection, the design phase of the artwork, and the fabrication and installation phase. During the first part, the artist selection, AIPP staff works with the community, so that's y'all, and the sponsor department, which is the parks department, uh, and they weigh in on goals for the artwork, which is what we're going to talk about tonight. A jury is then created that is advised by community advisors. If you're interested in advising the jury, please let me know uh, to select the artist that is the best fit for the project. After going through the required approvals, the selected artist launches into their research and design phase. After design is approved through months of research, design and community interaction, the artist is contracted to fabricate and install the artwork. So Colony Park District Park was dedicated in 2020. We look forward to the day where we can dedicate art in your new pool. In conjunction with the park project, AIPP worked with many Colony Park community members to define the goals for artwork for the park. The commissioned artist Tyson Davis, who you see here, worked with students from Overton Elementary at Turner Roberts Community Center to help paint the mural. How? Through our process. What do we need from you now? So ideas and inspiration is what we're looking for tonight. This information will be used to create goals for the artwork at the pool. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Scott to discuss the timeline. Thank you, Marjorie. Can't wait to see that artwork. That'll be amazing. I know the painting out there everybody's loved. So, oh uh, yes, the timeline. When, when can we have our pools? What everybody wants to know. I think the answer that everybody wants to hear is next year, but. It's, we have to be a little realistic. So we're, here we are in January 2021 with our first community meeting. We have three planned um, for now. Uh, we think we can get that, uh, get the pool kind of ideas of what uh, the community wants to do within those three meetings, at least we hope so. Those should occur probably, we think, in April, the next one, and then July, the one after that. Uh, hopefully by then we will have a really good idea of what the community wants to do for their pool. Again, this is your design, not ours. And so then by, with that information, then we'll release the design team to uh, get do all the details, uh, start working with the construction guys to figure out cost, maybe come back to you. We'll see how that process goes. That's the design process is always, I, I call it an iterative kind of uh, um, spinning wheel in many ways in which you kind of come back to some ideas and, and move forward. So hopefully by the end of, 20, of this year that we'll have a, a design pretty much done. Uh, then we have to submit for permits and get our, get our permits uh, through the city of Austin. Uh, we don't get any special treatment just because we're a city department. And that usually roughly takes about a year uh, we will obviously do everything we can to strive to do less than that, um, but we'll probably plan on for a year so that uh, we get our permits by the end of 2022, and then we start construction right after that immediately. Uh, we'll try to find ways to start sooner if we can. 
Um, and then, so say early 2023, that construction for most pools probably takes about a year. And so by the end of 2023, we can open a pool. Um, and that is our, that is our goals. Those, that's what we're going to strive for. That's what we're going to work for. We're even work for to do it sooner if we can. Um, you know, we'd love to find ways to do this in stages to get some things done before other things. And that's what you have this team here for. So again, what we need from uh, y'all tonight is ideas. What do you want your pool to be? What do you want it to look like? What do you want it to feel like? So thank you so much. I appreciate everybody being here. Can't wait to hear from you. And Dr. Cortez, I guess I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Scott. So at this time, we're going to do a quick audience check-in. Um, we're looking at the comments. For those of you that are following us on Facebook, we get to see our, our partners on here. Esteban, we see you. Thank you for the positive feedback. Um, thank you, Catullus Development Court, for being here. Uh, Eric loves the mural. Thank you for the feedback. That looks great. We're just checking in to see if anyone has any comments. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Catalis, for being here. For those of you that have been following our project, Catalis Development Corp um, is going to be, they are the master developer for the 208 acres of Colony Park Sustainable Community Initiative. And um, they're also going to be involved in this process. Obviously, they are in charge of the entire part, but this sits just adjacent to the 208 acres. Okay. All right, well, it looks like everybody's enjoying their time. So I think at this point, I don't see any other comments coming in. All right, so is everybody ready? We're, now's the time we're gonna be love to hear from you and get your feedback. Um, this is a time I mentioned earlier, grab your kids, grab whoever's in your house, your partner, and get ready to give us your feedback. So you're gonna kind of listen in. I'm gonna give you guys, uh, I think I see Miss Wright. Uh, hello, Miss Wright, thank you for joining us. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So um, what we will want you to do is we're gonna give you some directions, okay? So for those of you that are watching us on your computer, some of you may be watching us on your phone. If you're watching us on your computer, we ask that you take out your phone um or if you're on the computer to open up a new tab because we are going to be sharing a link so we're going to give our team a little bit of time to put the link in the comment section okay as they get that link on there they're going to be posting it so you should be able to see it on youtube and we're also showing it here. This is the poll that you're gonna be going to. We're using a program that's really cool called Polls Everywhere. Uh, pollev.com backslash Colony Park PR331. We just shared it. Several of our partners just shared it as well. So we're gonna have you guys click on that link and it's gonna ask you to enter your name and then you'll hit submit. And that's all you have to do. So we're going to give you a couple of minutes to get on. Okay. So now we're going to have you, um, you're going to be giving us some feedback. So we're going to start with our first question. Okay. So now that you're in the program, our first question for you is when you think about Colony Park, what word or phrase best describes your community? So we're gonna be asking you what word or phrase best describes your community. So if you have multiple words you'd like to enter, you're gonna put a comma between. Um, and if you're working from your computer, you're gonna kinda of have to go back and forth from the tabs on Facebook. But our first question for you is when you think about Colony Park, what word or phrase best describes your community? And we are now going to start to see what you're sharing with us in a word cloud. Community and resilient. We are already starting to see some of your feedback come through. Diverse, Austin, historic.
Natalia, diversity, minorities, family, community is coming out loud. Seems like everyone is feeling the sense that this is a community. What do you think about? What's your word? Family. All right. We also see another colleague of ours that just signed on. I can see Martin Barrera. Thank you so much for being here. Martin is the project director of the Colony Park Sustainable Community. We're glad you're here, Martin. I hope you are participating with us. All right. Well, this is really good feedback we're getting. Getting some good answers here. Home, this is home to so many of you. As Miss Scott has always mentioned, she's lived here for over 40 years in Colony Park. Some of you are coming in that are new as well. We're gonna go ahead and go on to the second question now that you guys have gotten the hang of this. Okay. The next question, it should automatically refresh in your browser so you don't have to do anything at this point. So when you envision the Colony Park Aquatic Facility, what kind of place would you like it to be? So when you're thinking about it, when you envision Colony Park Aquatic Facility, what kind of place would you like it to be? Again, if you have multiple words, you can use a comma, but we're also gonna get and look over at the word cloud. Friendly, inviting, diverse, fun, and free. Getting everybody's feedback. All the things we envision for this aquatic facility. Nature, diverse, open inviting beautiful if you've been out there and you've seen the hill on the colony park district park it is absolutely beautiful i think it's going to have a lot of greenery yes fun innovative wonderful beautiful we're giving some time because we know there's a 10 second delay but we love this thank you everybody for just writing in your thoughts Friendly place, family open were the big things of what we envisioned. So these are things we're taking down. The designers are, know that you're thinking about this. We're keeping this in mind. So now we have another question for you. I'm going to go to our next question. Again, it'll automatically refresh for you. Now, this is for the arts and public places. So we want to think about the artists. What word or words could you share with an artist to help design the artwork for this project? So as Marjorie said, we're gonna be selecting someone who's gonna do this work and we wanna to start to begin to think about what would we tell them? What would be the words we wanna share with an artist to help us design the artwork? Friendship, color, neighborhood. Shaded. And diversity, it sounds like everybody wants this piece to be diverse, to represent family. Colorful, the beauty and peace of families together. It's almost like you could put all those words together continuation maybe this is a continuation of the peace and harmony mural themed color let me give it some some more time we know everybody's on a delay and love amazing Thank you everybody for sharing that. So we're gonna go on to the next question here. Q 
Okay, so this is also for the arts and public places. And this one's great, you guys, it's gonna refresh on your screen and it is why is the Colony Park Aquatic Facility important for your community? And this question actually, you can put a statement, we're gonna see everybody's statements come up. So we wanna know why is the Colony Park Aquatic Facility important for your community? So we're gonna give you guys some time to answer that. And as you're thinking about this question, why it's important for your own personal family too. So we're gonna go ahead and move over to the results. Wonderful, so we're already starting to get in some answers here. Access to park pool services in our neighborhood. It represents a place where everybody can be. It can unite our community in one safe, enjoyable space. We don't have any water facilities. I may not be able to read these as I'm coming in. It allows people of all incomes to escape the hot sun. It can help people meet each other and friendships to form. Oh, that's beautiful. Every neighborhood deserves the same amenities. For too long, this part of Austin has been left out. We're so happy we're on this journey here. Public facilities are needed in the developing Eastern Crescent of the city, absolutely. Provides a family-friendly, fun experience. Pools and learning to swim can be life-saving, that is so true. And for the health of our children and our families. So coming in. This will be a gathering place for families. It would also be important because we have the highest rate of morbidity and mortality in Travis County, absolutely. It will allow us to become a healthy community. To provide a mix of use environments for the neighborhood and interact with others. And all this information you're sharing again is going to be put together, compiled, all the team that you met today is going to be reading it. They're going to be considering it. These are things you're going to be thinking about. And of course, this is going to be for the arts and public places. Health and justice. Everyone needs access to city assets. Okay, we're going to move on to the next section. If you are getting this, you can still answer these questions for us. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is it's called a community preference exercise. So now that you've shared with us kind of the words that describe what you're feeling, what you wanna see in this poll, we are now going to go over the amenities and activities that you saw at the beginning of this presentation. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the pool activities, okay? So on this one, I'm gonna go a little bit slow so I can show everybody because we do have quite a bit to go through. But we're gonna ask you, what are the top four activities you would like to see at the Colony Park Aquatic Facility? So this is what would be the type of activities you would like to see. And the pool activities, as you recall from the very beginning of the presentation, is what you do in the water. So this includes informal recreation, such as free swim, structured classes, such as swim lessons, or competitive events, such as water polo. So this is 13 items that you can select from. They are gonna come up on your computer. You're gonna be able to select from anything from lap swimming, water exercise, recreational free swim. And again, there's 13 options and we want your top four. Water basketball, water games. What activities you do in the water? Swim lessons, lifeguard training, kayak training, competitive swimming, competitive diving. These are activities, what you do in the water. There's 13 and you're gonna pick your top four. So now we're gonna go over and see what we have. What are all of the
Okay. So we can see here what's coming in, what people are voting for. Recreational swims coming at top. Swim lessons, lap swimming, water exercise. These are the four activities. Go. Top ones are staying up there. Lap swimming. Okay, so these rankings are also gonna be shared with our team and we can see they're moving around and they're moving up and down. Very good. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next question. We're still doing our preferences. So the first thing we do was activities. Now we're gonna be doing the amenities. So what are the top four amenities that you would like to see at the Colony Park Aquatic Facility? So these are the four top amenities. So the pool amenities is what is built with the pool. So features within the pool to support or enhance the pool activities. And these ones here, you're gonna have 10 to choose from. It's gonna be the same as the last question. The photos are gonna start popping up. So you have 10 options. Uh, we're going to have play features, lane lines, water slides, water umbrellas, or water tree, water shelf, a water bench, a zero entry. I've seen a lot of this at some of the pools. You're going to have 10 to pick from. So as you guys are getting your question refreshed, we're gonna go see what the rankings are. It's coming up here. Top amenities, play activities, there you go, play lines. Play features. It's loading as you guys are voting here. Zero entry. Oh, water bench. So it's like our top contender there. Water bench, lane line, zero entry, water slides. Awesome. So again, this information is going to be used so that we can figure out what amenities we would like in the pool. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the last question. So one of the features that you got to see on the tour was building characteristics. So we are gonna ask you now about the building characteristics. Um, and we're also gonna ask you for your top four choices. What top four choices of building characteristics do you wanna see? So this is what actually gives the building character. It is what you see on the outside. It presents a style and the characteristic. This is the building characteristics. And this one we have quite a bit. There's 15. There's so many beautiful ways that the pool can look, but there's 15 choices. And this is what you're gonna start to see. So kind of pick the top four that you think speak to you that you would envision the pool looking like. So these are the different types of features, but also the different type of materials that can be built for the characteristics of the pool and the facility. Remember, this is an aquatic facility, so it's gonna have a training room and those types of things that Scott mentioned earlier. So there's 15 options. 
limestone and glass, stucco and colored panels, colorful shade structure, something similar to what that given stonework, a mesh shade structure. We have 15 options for you guys. The fabric shade structure, which we have at Bartholomew Pool. We also have concrete and translucent roof, beautiful curvilinear timber frame. And I think we have one more slide. We're good. Okay, so your top four building characteristics. What gives the building character? What would you like to see? There we go, it's coming in. Ooh, concrete walls and steel frames, speaking to folks. And the photos are still loading, so I think people are still voting. Ooh, let's see what's getting there. Concrete walls and steel frames is up there. Ah, the colorful shaded structure and the wood siding. What else? Let's see. Masonry and timbers. Still voting, getting votes in. Okay, we'll pick our number one front runners at concrete walls and still frames. So it looks like it's coming. We are still going to have people have the ability to vote. We'll be talking about this in a few minutes through February 15th. And that other option, there's the limestone and glass. So these are the top options that we're seeing right now, the top four options for all the building characteristics. Okay, so that covers our preferences, your opinions and your feedback. We're so grateful. Um, we hope you guys enjoy that activity. I think in this virtual world, we're just trying to find new ways to really get your feedback and have it be exciting and fun. So I hope you enjoyed entering your options and your choices. We sure will be taking all this information we're collecting and we'll be using it for our next meeting and the information in between and making the decisions on what's to come. So what we're gonna go to next um, is we are actually going to move on to the next part of our presentation. And one thing we wanted to bring to your attention is that there are still opportunities as we think about the swim season coming up, um, as we think about what's happening next. I know we just started the first of the year, but we are, the PAR department is our, and the aquatics department is already thinking about hiring lifeguards. So if you have children, you have friends, you have anyone who's interested in being a lifeguard, currently hiring lifeguards and swim instructors, it's $15 an hour. They're gonna be getting a free bus pass, paid sick leave and a flexible schedule. So we know we wanna get everybody ready who's gonna be lifeguarding in Colony Park, but also any pool that you'll be working and supporting throughout the year. Um, so again, this is an opportunity we just wanted to share with you. So with that, we are going to bring our Scott Sin back on and he's gonna be discussing next steps with the project, Scott. Thank you, Dr. Cortez. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed that. I know in this virtual world, trying to get as much feedback as we can is, is challenging. And I think uh, hopefully everybody got to see this and participate again. It's gonna be up, uh, Dr. Cortez, I believe through February 15th, right? Yep, I see it because it says right there. Maybe I'll learn how to read. Um, and so please feel free to tell your friends, tell your neighbors. Uh, we want as much feedback as we can get. The more the, more, the better. Um, I, I, I want it all and I want to hear everybody's preference. You know, again, um, you know, this will be continually changing process. We will keep doing this throughout. Um, these, this uh, feedback starts to inform where we'll be moving with our designs. Um, so basically it's your design. So your feedback and, and your information 
helps us create these things. Uh, without it, we can't. We're going to be coming up with other ideas that you may or may not like. So we want to hear from you. I just, I know I keep saying that over and over again, but I just, I can't emphasize it enough. So, um, and so we want to have that feedback for February. That'll give the design team a chance to put a few uh, plans together, some ideas together, bring some sketches in. Um, and then hopefully in April, well, not hopefully in April, uh, we will then come together again and show you some of these ideas and start to put a little pen to paper, start to let you see what the, what hopefully your vision that you're telling us will try to put on paper and bring that to you. And then uh, if we totally miss the book, guess what? And that's exactly how this process will work. And so we will work tirelessly and, and hard to get it right. And I can't emphasize that enough. So I'm really looking forward to it. Can't, you know, again, more feedback, more feedback, and we will see you in April of this year. So thank you so much. Thank you, Scott. And I can see our friends at Neighborhood Housing and Planning are asking us, is there an email for feedback? And yes, there is. Um, and there's also a website that we have specifically for um, the Colony Park Aquatic Facilities. So if you go to that website, we will have loaded tomorrow, we will have the presentation that you saw tonight. Um, we will have a link for you to provide your feedback. If you've already voted tonight, we want to make sure that we do this voting appropriately. So if you've already voted, you'll click into the survey and you'll just be able to add more comments, but we will not have you able to vote. So we don't have double votes. Um, but anyone who is part of your neighborhood association or group that you would like to share the link or the survey, they can vote and they'll be answering some questions and then they can vote and provide their feedback. And as you can see there, that there was the website for ways that you guys can get involved. So at this time, we're gonna go ahead and open it up for questions. I can see that Brandon is mentioning that the facility should also cater to working adults. Absolutely. I think this facility is gonna be for all demographics, backgrounds, age groups. Um, thank you, Brandon, for commenting and sharing that. We're gonna bring the rest of the project team on to see if there's any questions that might be scrolling in. And we're gonna wait a couple of seconds just because there is a delay. And so we wanna make sure if anyone has any questions that they can ask them. Eric also shared that the demographics were showing up, which he was very excited about. <laughs> Miss Wright, if you were trying to select something um, or unselect it, we hope you were able to get to that. You're able to just unclick and click. So we hope you were able to make your selection. Thank you. We're happy that you're here too, Ms. Wright. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Larissa. We're super excited you're here as well. We are getting a question from Brandon. I think this is the naming of the pool. I don't know if we have an answer for that at this time, but Brandon is asking possibilities of renaming it. Naming it after a neighborhood isn't inclusive. It implies it belongs to that neighborhood and this is paid by all taxpayers. So I don't know if we have a question or if we have someone that might want to respond to that. Hey, Ray, Ray, can you help with that one? I think you're on mute, Ray. Hello. Can hey. you hear me? Yep. Great. Uh, my name is Ray Hernandez. I'm with the City of Austin Parks and Rec Department. I'm a project manager. Um, I wanted to uh, provide a response to the question about naming of the pool facility. There is a process in place for the naming of part facilities. So that would include places such as recreation centers, uh, parks, and so on. Uh, it is a process that um, is, is not, it's fairly lengthy. It does have to go through the parks board. 
uh, you would need to contact the um, director's office of PARD to get information on how to go about doing that. Uh, but at the moment, for now, the, the project site, uh, we're just calling it the Colony uh, uh, Park site. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ms. Scott, if you would like to say a couple of words, I know that you're there. Uh, yes. Um, we did go through that process with uh, the Parks Board, and we chose Colony Park uh, District Park because... Colony Park has fought for a pool for over 45 years. And we wanted to make sure that it was something that also went with the uh, park. It's not just the pool itself. It is within the Colony Park District Park. And so that's the reason it's called the Colony Park Pool. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Thank you, Ray. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions coming in. Um, we're really grateful for everyone. There's an email, I think I posted that earlier. Uh, thank you to our friends from Neighborhood Housing and Planning for joining us. Okay. Well, I think we're good to go. We are going to allow everybody, if you want to say a little something, but thank you. We truly enjoyed, this is the launch. This is a series of three meetings that will be taking place. This is the first meeting, as we mentioned early on. Um, and we're excited to see you, as Scott mentioned in April. Please stay engaged with us. Um, we know that this one presentation, if you are viewing it later, we will be still taking your feedback. We wanna hear from you. But again, we just wish everybody a good night. Thank you for participating with us. And we're happy that you could be with us here today. So thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you all.